Hello guys, it's Mikefield here again and today I will show you how the damage is calculated in Might and Magic 10 Legacy. I will also discuss some of the mm, aspects of spell scaling. So, well, let's begin with the weapon damage. So, how exactly does this thing work? Let's see. So, I have a weapon with, um, with 28 to 30 damage. This thing is multiplied by something, and in this way I will obtain this final value here. So how exactly does this thing work? This is actually pretty simple. All this game does is that it takes full value of this, so well, of this weapon's damage of my seismic silk sword, <laughs> silk sword, which is uh, 28 to 30. So let's take, let's say it's 30 for instance. So it takes this 30 damage. And then it adds my might multiplied by 2 and then it adds the damage which I obtain from my um, respective weapon skill. So in this case it's a sword skill. I have um, 25 levels in sword. So this means that I will get 125% um, from here. Um, I will get 150% um, from here, which, sum which sums up to a total sum of 275%. Of but this, is, uh, this does not yet include the final value, that is 100% of the base one. So when we add all these things up, we will get... 375% of my base weapon's damage. So in this case it's 30. But when we multiply this, we do not really obtain 133. We will get 112 and a half. So how does it work? So first of all, this game rounds up every value which is above half. So in this case, 112 12 and a half will be rounded up to 113. Moreover, once we round this thing up, this game also adds your base uh, elemental damage value, so in this case it's 20F damage, to the final value. So in this case we'll have 113 of physical damage and then we'll get 20 additional F damage. Alright, so we have our base damage calculated. So how does this game um, reduce damage? It's actually pretty simple. So your armor value will reduce the damage by the flat value of it. So for instance, it, and it only includes the physical damage. So if you are to take 130 damage and you have 30 armor, you will take 100 damage. Simple as that, really. However, your elemental damage from the weapon actually undergoes the reduction by the resistances. Um, so how does the resistance work? We'll get to that a bit later. But remember that when you have this, these two coefficients in a weapon, one does scale with your might and with your weapon skill and the other does not. So for instance the seismic silk sword will scale uh, its physical damage with, uh, that is this damage signified by 28. 8 to 30 with your damage values while this 20F damage remains unchanged. However, if you do deal critical damage, this additional elemental damage is also multiplied. Okay, so how exactly does critical damage work in this game? Again, it's kind of simple. So, um, this one here, critical chance, determines the chance that you have to deal critical damage. It is influenced by your destiny. So um, I believe that it's a quarter of your destiny that equals to your critical chance, plus some other coefficients. For instance, um, uh, Crusader, or generally speaking, the sword users, will get additional 5% to critical chance on expert tier. And there are some other um, interesting coefficients here which will increase. Your critical chance, for instance, if I cast um, Primordial Magic buff from here. 
So let's go ahead and do this. My critical chance um, here should increase significantly. Yeah, so it went from 8% to 11%. So as you can see, you can modify this critical chance up to a certain extent, of course. Anyway, um, I believe that this is it for the damage discussion. So when you deal critical damage, your whole damage, that is this 125 to 133, is multiplied by 50%, but it multiplies the elemental damage and your uh, physical damage coefficients separately. So your physical damage will get multiplied by half, and then so this 113 gets uh, multiplied by 1.5 basically, and this 20 damage from F also gets multiplied by 1.5, so 150%. Mm, so this means that you will deal 30 F damage and well a result of this equation of multiplying um, 113 by uh, 1.5. I hope this kind of clarifies things for you. And now we'll move on to another mm, aspect of combat, that is spells. They do actually, they don't actually differ much from what you get um, in in regular um, skills too much because the spell damage which is a bit difficult to calculate because um, you don't get those flat values at all your um, magical damage will get multiplied in the same way your regular damage is multiplied but um, it will also include it will include magic instead of might so Magic times two, it's the percentage, and you add, add this percentage to your um, to your level of the respective skill, and this way you will obtain your total damage. There's another pretty important thing here, however, mind you that those final levels of the skills actually increase your percentage damage you gain from the skills by five percent. So this means that once you reach Grandmaster tier you'll basically double your magical damage. And it's a huge increase in damage, really, believe me. This will be really, really significant. So overall, when, due to the fact that you, that you also gain the damage from your attribute points, from, from ma magic, this will not be that significant. It won't be the straight 50% bump in damage, but it will be about, well, you inc it will increase your damage by about 30%, I suppose, if you went for full magic, that is. Alright, what else I wanted to talk about? So, the resistances. How do they work? It's pretty much said in, the, in their description. You get them here. So you, for instance, get 16% um, of primordial resistance. It means that it will provide half of this resistance's value to completely neglect this damage. So, for instance, something hits you with... Um, Okay, so let's take fire for instance. So you get hit by a fireball. You get 10% chance, so 1 in 10, you will evade all the damage. Or you will evade some kind of a spell which comes from fire magic um, skill. And after that, if you fail to avoid this damage, there is also a 19% reduction to that damage. So it takes all this damage. And it will deal, uh, and it will decrease it by 20%. However, if um, you or your opponent uh, have those special um, skill tiers, um, so expert, master, and grandmaster, you can actually ignore uh, certain amounts of your opponent's magical resistances. So, for instance, um, you get here a sum of um, it's 15 plus 20, I believe. So this will be, um, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's going to be 35 uh, of the resistance that, you will, resistance that you will actually ignore if you decide to use um, F magic spell on your opponent. Moreover, the spells can also critically hit. It works pretty much the same way um, it does in case of of the regular damage here. Okay, so for magical powers you actually get those multipliers here. 
so your damage is multiplied by 4.2 in this case for water and so on. You get this critical chance, critical damage which applies after all this damage is calculated and then is ap applied to your opponent on the basis of their resistances. Pretty simple, isn't it? So finally we have blocking. Um, how does it work? So let's take this Crusader here. She has three general blocks, one melee block and she has 65% to block an attack. This means that she has a total of 4 blocks overall. And um, every time she she has 3 block attempts generally, so from range and in melee, mind you it doesn't really affect magic at all, it affects only the range attack, so for instance throwing spears at you will mean that this will allow you to block them, but when someone throws a fireball at you, you won't be able to dodge it this way. Anyways, so block chance is a flat value, it is not affected by uh, your opponent's um, attack skill for instance. So if you have many blocks, this means that you can actually block really many attacks too. So this is 65% no matter how strong your opponent is. And this is why using a shield on at least one character is pretty, pretty good idea. Mm, yeah, so that would be it I guess for the shields. Now the evade value, um, I'm not not exactly sure how it works, but it does in a way, um, this is actually a, it confronts your own uh, or your opponent's attack values, so it's, they are derived from perception skill, and uh, the other character's uh, evade value, and it somehow calculates the chance uh, for you to hit them. I'm not really sure how to how does it work. It's probably some kind of a percentage chance calculated based on the relationship between your hand attack, I mean between your main hand attack and your opponent's um, evade value. But I'm not exactly sure how is it gonna be calculated in this case, for instance. So if I, if I was about to hit myself, I have no clue how would it exactly work. But generally speaking, it is good to have a lot of evasion because it just does apply to every single hit. So for instance this blade dancer has very high evasion, this means that he would probably have very he would have very little chances to hit himself in this case. Because his main hand attack and his evade values are pretty close. Okay, so I hope I clarified some things here and I guess that this actually will be it for this episode. So stay tuned for more guys. Thank you for watching and if you liked watch if you enjoyed watching this video please subscribe to my channel and comment below it so see you